when I was a kid, I wanted to be a boy so that I could grow up to be a cowboy. But uh, afterwards, I realized that that wasn't possible. I mean, so I'm a spiritual cowboy, maybe. When I came to Greece many years ago, it was to teach English at a frontisterio. Every Sunday, I was free and would take a bus into the countryside and try to walk over mountains or swamps or wilderness of any kind until I got back to another village. This was how I got into the habit of wandering about lost in the mountains. But the fact is, I liked being lost. Every day I see her, in my head I hear her, kind and lovely voice. But when I try to reach her, I stumble and I fall, I guess I am in love. All my fancy through me, tell me I look gloomy, who are they to judge? Every day I try to take quite a lot of exercise, and if I don't take any exercise, I um, I immediately get headaches and things like that. In the evening, I go and walk around the um, Limnothalasa there just to to get some exercise and to see and to watch birds because I'm interested in the birds. Tell me I'm your man, and I will climb the highest mountain. Take me by the hand. Let me kiss you by your ear. Give me what you got. Give me death or give me pain, my darling. I was looking for a horse and I didn't know really where to start, so I had a look on the internet and I did a search for horses in Greece. When I was three, I went for my first riding lesson and I can even remember the pony. I mean, it was called Sooty. I was involved with horses. Um, most of my life until I went to university and then I sold my pony and then I was a teacher in London and then I came to Greece so I got involved with the riding school then. I suppose horses have been most of my life since then. And I came across an article by Penny and it was in the Irish Trotting website and it had an email address and I thought okay this lady sounds really nice I'll write and ask her. I must say, I'm probably the most unpopular person in the village, but, you know, I can't really do much about it now. In that case, I shall do as many things as I can um, for the environment. So I go to um, Mijanjona, to the Dimarchio, and complain about pollution. Um, I go and put pressure on them to do things. I go every day and check whether people are going to shoot things that they shouldn't shoot all this kind of stuff, so of course it doesn't make me popular at all. Every day I dream her, in my sleep I see her pain and creamy face. But when I try to task her, I wake up and I fall, I guess I'm just a fool. Basically what I have to do when I'm not on a long ride is try to get enough money to go on a long ride. So any way that I can make money, I do. Usually, once or twice a year, I get a translation to do. Somebody might want an actual poem translated. I also like to do translations for the various environmental non-government organisations that are in Greece, so I've, I've done work for nearly all of them at one time or another. Baby, I'm in love and I don't think it's wrong to give my heart to you. Tell me I'm your man. I will climb the highest mountain Take me by the hand Let me kiss you by your ear Sometimes I think I ought to get a proper job and um, so that I'm not always either desperately trying to get money or not having any money. And, and if I had a steady job, but then if I had a steady job I wouldn't, wouldn't be free to, to do things that interest me. You're just a ghost I love, I kill you, ghost. I love, I kill I adore. I love, sweet Valentine. I, I used to be an examiner. I'm not for the English exams. I'm not anymore because I got bored with it. 
Sometimes I give English lessons, but not very often because I got bored with that as well. I think I see Penny as the ultimate pioneer. You know, I think there's nowhere that she wouldn't go on George, quite honestly, given the opportunity. Uh, she'd go on horseback anywhere in the world. Ο Γιώργο Ομαρινόπουλο στην Αδραβίδα, λοιπόν, μαζί με μια γυναίκα από την Αγγλία, η οποία μένει στη χώρα μα και εδώ και έξι χρόνια κάνει το γύρο τη Ελλάδα. Με ένα άλογο, βεβαίω, έτσι. Από δύο χρόνια ένα απόγευμα. Ήταν έτσι σούρουπο, είχε αδραλιάσει λίγο. Είχε μουσγώσει ήδη. Έπιανε η νύχτα. Ήταν μεσημεράκι και. Α, ήταν κρύο, θυμάσαι. Yeah. Την ύβρα ακριβώ σε ένα σημείο εδώ πιο πάνω με τα λόγο. Κατεβαίνοντα από το βουνό με ένα άλογο κόκκινο, την είδα από μακριά πριν το νεκροταφείο. Δεν πιστεύαμε στα μάτια μα. Και έλειπε στο άλογο πάνω, αμάνι, τι έγινε. Ένα άλλο φανταστικό. Πέρασε μέσα από το χωριό και φέτα φυγεί καλό για τα καφέλια. Μαζεύτηκε πολλοί κόσμο, α πούμε. Στην λέω, παιδάκι μου, λέω, πού κοιμάσαι, λέω, μην κοιμάσαι μέσα στην ερημιά. Όχι, θα έρθει μέσα, όχι, θα καθίσω έξω, έλεγε η ψυχή. Όχι, λέει, ευχαριστώ πολύ, δεν έρχομαι, γιατί το άλογο φοβάται μόνο του. I usually try not to sleep in villages. Because you have to talk to people such a lot. Um, in Corfu, there's a lot of taxi drivers who have got um, horse taxis. So I went to see those guys and I said, you know, anybody got any horses for sale? And they said, oh yes, Kiryu Yosifi has got a horse and it's really some horse. And it was George, he was, um, he was on a tether and he was very tubby and looked really well. And he, he was obviously extremely friendly and he loved people and he was, he was a really lovely horse. Τραβούσε μια γυναίκα η οποία φορούσε ένα κράνο. He's a very stubborn animal and he's very self-willed and he's actually not very sensitive. So he will always test everything to the limit. And you know, when you when you're trying to put his stuff on, he won't stand still. He will stand still when I'm riding him so that I can get off. Because he, he's realized that the only reason the only way to get rid of this great fat rider is to stand still, otherwise I just stay there. And one other time he stood still was when I, I fell over in a river and he just stood there so that I could get hold of, get hold of his leg and then um, pull myself up, otherwise I'd have drowned, wouldn't I? Yeah. Γιατί ο ντόρο που έγινε στην περιοχή όπου περνούσε και εδώ ήταν το άλογο. Το πρώτο είναι το άλογο και ένα άλλο. Το πρώτο μιλάγανε το άλογο και μετά για την περιοχή. I started near Kalamata at the beginning of March. And roughly, this is the route I took. And And then, that, way, there. that particular journey she wanted to do 
this challenge of riding, I think she had to ride something like 1,600 kilometers to become a, a member of the Long Riders uh, Association. Πενταγιούς και θα ανέβαινε προς τα πάνω. Ξαναμεί θα πάει από Κροκύλιο, άνω χώρα. Ένα μέρος λέγεται άνω χώρα. Να πει να κυρία Γεκάθη, πάει στη Καστριώτησα. Του είχε ο χάρτης μέσα στη Καστριώτησα, από εκεί η Σικούλα και από εκεί η Σμενίδα. Ανέβαινε από κάτω, από τη Λίμνη του Μόρνου, ανέβαινε προς τα πάνω και από ό,τι μας είπε θα συνέχιζε μετά προς την Τολοκαρνανία. Παραλία, παραλία, στη Πεταλέα και πάει στο Μαυροβούν και πάει στο Αγήθιο. Mm -hmm. Από το Αγήθιο πάει στη Σκάλα. Τώρα αυτή γιατί πήγε στη Σκάλα είναι δική της δουλειά. Γύρω γύρω από τη Μάνη, από τη Λακωνική Μάνη και μετά θα ανέβαινε τον Ταΐγετο. Ακολουθώντας εκ διαμέτρου αν, ε, αντίθετη κατεύθυνση από εκείνη από την οποία έπρεπε να πάρει. Δεν ξέρω τι έκανε. Και λαϊδίστε, ωραία μου πουλάκια και λαϊδίστε. Τραγουδίστε και λαϊδίστε, τραγουδίστε τον ωραίο, τον ωραίο σα σκοπό. Και λαϊδίστε, λαϊδίστε τραγουδίστε τον ωραίο. I went to the Temple of the Oracle of Death. I went there because it's the Temple of Poseidon, who is in charge of horses. People say that Poseidon bought horses to Greece. So I thought, well, I will go there and I will ask Poseidon to look after George. I stopped with George outside and I said, can I buy seven or eight kilos of barley, please? She just said, either take 25 kilos or take nothing. I wanted to go to the mountain Lycio in Arcadia, where they had a cult to Zeus the wolf. The people who live there are supposed to be the most ancient tribes, and they believed that it was possible to become a werewolf, and Pausanias also believed the legend, at least, about this. We were going along a track, and so I stopped to give George some water, and I got off, and I heard somebody shouting from below. And then, poof, he shot at us, poof, and then he shot again. So I tied up George to a bush, and I went running down the hill towards where I heard the shot coming from. And I said, well, what do you think you're doing shooting at me? And the guy said, if I'd known that you were a woman, I wouldn't have shot at you. I really wanted to go to Stymphalia because 
because of the legends again that um, there were these birds there which, which had bronze beaks and talons and were extremely dangerous and very unpleasant. interested in eating sweet things and um, I'm definitely addicted to carbohydrate and I have a terrible trouble controlling my eating habits and that's one of the main reasons I go on rides of course because I can't get any food there so I have to lose weight. Usually I eat some of that automatic soup that you just put boiling water in, it's very disgusting. <laughs> there are different flavours and I think that the curry flavour is probably the worst and the tomato flavour is my favourite, so I save that for best. It, it had snowed, so the mountains had got snow tops and there was a storm coming. You'd get texts to say, I'm somewhere in the mountains and it's snowing. I'm tucked into my sleeping bag and I'd think, no. It sounds wonderful sitting here at home, <laughs> but I don't think I want to swap places with you. And so I had to travel from Stimphalia to Corinth, but I didn't want to stop anyway because they had just sprayed everything with herbicide at that time and it was just the air was poisoned everything was poisoned it was just went to try and cross the canal at the time that I had decided to do it. So I got there and it was a, a swing bridge and when the cars came they made a, a, a noise on the bridge, it kind of made a knocking sound and George just freaked out totally and he was just beside himself, he was just insane. <laughs> Um, we're coming up from Delphi along the ancient road that's more than 3,000 years old uh, which goes through olive groves which are absolutely fabulous. George needed a, a break and so did I, so I thought, well, we'll stop at Amphis anyway. And we found um, a hotel, and the guy who had the hotel was very, very good to us. So I was out of the city, I went to the hotel, I was only in the city, we were able to help them, what they wanted. They didn't want to help anyone. They were so close and so far from each other. George was so happy because there was cars and people, and he had lots of people visiting him all the time. He was very happy, I would say. Τρομερή εντύπωση. Θα κάνω την πρωτότυπο για την άμεσα. Παρόλο που δεν είναι μεγάλη πόλη, αλλά δεν έχουμε ας πούμε, άλλα γόνατα και τέτοια. Το πλαίσιο που ήθελα να πάω πολύ περισσότερο ήταν το Μάντιν Γκιόνα. 
because it's right in the middle of Greece, but it's supposed to be completely wild. I knew that the maps wouldn't be accurate, and so I knew that I would be lost quite a lot of the time. Εκλήκους. Πολλούς άμα μείνετε ζωντανά έξω το βράδυ, πάνε. Τα χάσαν. Λέω, πού κοιμάσαι, λέω, μην κοιμάσαι μέσα στην ερημιά και ο λύκος σου ξέρεις το άλογο που κυνηγάει. Τα πιάνει από εδώ από τη μουτσούνα και το σκάει το άλογο. Ο λύκος. Anyway, we were kind of wandering about on this mountain and trying to get, trying to get somewhere. And, um, we kept going up and down paths and then mist came and I couldn't see where I was at all. And then it started to rain and snow, <laughs> it was just awful. Suddenly the mist cleared and I saw a huge lake. So I got my map and I looked to see if there was a lake and there was a lake and it's the lake that is made by, it's an artificial lake made by damming the river Mornos, which meant we, we weren't anywhere where I thought we were at all. Of course it broke my heart to leave Fiona and nothing on the trip after that was had, you know, had what Jonas got. And on our way to Ambrakikos is where we went to um, Valmada. That's where I met the guys who um, drove me away from the village. I did tell you about that. 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 I Well, look. He said, you'll put your horse in our paddock, it's here, and you'll stay in our house for the night. And he said that his name was Manthos, and um, that he, he was very sorry that I'd been thrown out of the village. And I tied George up and I came into the house and I was so tired, because normally I don't go into people's houses because I'm too smelly. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. I've been on the road for two weeks and I haven't being able to wash except with cold water and everything. I don't want to go in the house, but I was just so tired. In the morning, Timia was cooking me some breakfast. What? <laughs> But I had, of the three places that I had decided I wanted to see, Ambrakikos was the third, because um, some friends of mine who are very interested in birds had told me that it is one of the best places in Greece to see birds. And when we got to Menidi, he, um, there was a boy came and uh, he said, you know, this is the, the most beautiful horse I've seen. I said, yeah, he's very nice, isn't he? And he said, my friend's got a hotel with grass outside and I'm sure he would like your horse to go there. So I said, okay, show me. He said, there's a place in the park. So I see him exactly to meet with some friends on the road. I was there. I stayed there in that room for three days until I, because I just thought, I can't go on, I just feel so ill. And I, to get to Katerini, I looked at the map and it just seemed so, so far away. So I, I phoned up home and I said, oh, I can't get any further, I'm so tired and I feel so ill. And they said, well, look, just get another 100 miles in way and then you'll have gone a, a thousand miles and then a lorry can come and get you. That'll be all right. 
ε, τι άρεσε να βλέπει μέρη να μιλάει με τον κόσμο. After three days, I I felt okay, and um, so we set off for the last bit. And we're miles from anywhere. And suddenly, I heard somebody shouting at me, you know, really shouting loudly and rudely. There's a bomb! There's a bomb! And I said, what are you talking about? And he said, there is a bomb, woman! <laughs> Go away! And I said, how do you know? And he said, I put it there! And there was this enormous explosion. I mean, huge. I mean, and half of the, half of the mountain on the other side just fell down into the valley like that. And I found this guy and I said, you, what are you doing exploding mountains? And he said, to improve the road. Why is it necessary to blow up half the mountain to improve a road that you know nobody uses? And that's why you blow it up. I think Penny's an amazing lady. I've never met anybody quite like Penny. She seems to be totally fearless. Uh, the fact that she can go alone with George over mountains and where there are, you know, known to be bandits and all sorts of things that could happen to you. A woman on her own, I think she's remarkably brave. Of course, you know, there are reasons to be afraid, but I try not to do that. If you've got a mobile, with you, you always feel that somebody can rescue you. And I don't feel as if I ought to take with me things that mean that I believe I'll need to be rescued. As we were going up the, this river into the Pindos, I, I knew that I was 30 kilometers from having done a thousand miles, so I was very happy. And we're going along, and um, we got onto a small asphalt road. There was no other road, so we had to go on it. And at the side of the road, there was a big posh hotel. And I thought, right, that's it. We're going to stay in this hotel because, you know, to celebrate there. And they had a room, and it was all wonderful. And I phoned up home, and I said, we've done it. We've done a thousand miles. We've done this many kilometers. And he said, no, that many kilometers is not a thousand miles. You've got to go another 40 kilometers before you've done a thousand miles. Oh. And then the next day was the day that I actually did the thousand miles. And what, what was wonderful was that when we had traveled about 40 kilometers, um, I found um, in the side of the road, there was these um, newts. And I thought, well, you know, actually that's better than a hotel. And, you know, to celebrate. They were just like little jewels, they were fantastic. Seeing those was like a big reward, really. When we got near to Descarti, George knew we were near home because he'd, we'd been in Descarti on other rides and he knew. And so he just started to say, you know, right, we're going home. And he just went for it. And, uh, you know, so in a couple of days from, from there, we were home. Αυτά για την Μπένι και να τη δώσετε πολλά χαιρετίσματα και όταν έρθει στην Αθήνα να έρθει να με βρει. Θα σα δώσω την διευθυνσή μου και το τηλεφωνό μου να έρθει να με βρει. Κάντε στο καλό σα, καλό ταξίδι και πολλά χαιρετίσματα και φίλια. Η Πιπί και ο. Πώ το λέει, δεν το λέει εγώ εγώ. Αλλιώ το κάπω το λέει το άλλο. I come a scary night. I speak. A bunch of lies And I walk Between these lies I have 
my friend with me A kiss A broken dream And oh please Would you turn those lights Okay, I'd, I'd like to dream of doing something like that, but I know actually I have not got the courage or the guts. Well, the reason I bother to do all this is a bit hard to, it's a bit hard to understand even for me. I resent people who think they can just deprive us of, of those things. It just means that people in the future won't be able to see any of these beautiful things and that seems to me awful, I mean it seems a sin a sin to deprive future generations of the beautiful things that we can see. And, and also, I, I think that's you know, part of the reason I go on these journeys with the horse. It's the same thing, because there's all these fantastic, wonderful, amazing things, and, and people are just taking them away from us. And I think that well, they should be stopped. <laughs> Yeah.